Simon again, Bangkok Chronicles. We've done a couple. I'm living in Bangkok. First, probably first four weeks. I'm exploring Pratanam Market. Now, it gets a bit boring when you start to walk around all these little alleyways, looking at clothes. And the other thing you find in Pratanam is jewellery, um, just the cheap jewellery, little earrings and necklaces and things, all mixed in. But it's another thing I had to consider for the future. The idea of moving back to the UK in say six months time and possibly importing products from Asia and selling all legitimately. Um, you had to find the different products and look at every product because you could find somebody there selling lots of earrings that were 10 pence, 20 pence. That you could suddenly sell for two pound, three pound back in your own country. So I did have to study and finding the right products to specialize in was a challenge, um, but it was, a, it was a really enjoyable. By moving around that Prasnam market, okay, it was on my doorstep with my condo, but there was lots of lovely Thai food hidden away and street food around the back alleys and things, cafes. It was a real buzz. Now, in that first month, I was in Pratanam most of the time. In the afternoon, I was popping across the road on Petchbury Road into Pantip Plaza. I've mentioned the computer city complex. I was in there as well, checking prices, doing my homework, working out, is there products in there that I can buy, sell on line and make a profit? Uh, and there was, there were certain things. Memory at the time was a big thing. You could buy little memory sticks. I could put it online on eBay and sell it for a profit. Now, in that first couple of months, I wasn't actually doing the buying and selling. I was just out investigating, finding stuff. <clears throat> and I spent a lot of time just doing that, pricing things up, getting people's information, finding all the contacts. Mobile phones were huge at that time. Um, 15 years ago, 14 years, it was Nokia's. They were, everyone wanted Nokia's. Suddenly, counterfeit Nokia's were popping up, so you had to be very careful. There was a lot of those. But phones, second-hand phones, huge market. Um, and they were selling for more than, for instance, back in the UK. And immediately I was thinking I could import second-hand mobile phones from the UK and sell them here. That was in my mind, but that would need the right licenses and things to do it. But it was noted. Possibly you could buy something in Thailand, sell it over there, exchange it instead of for money for other goods to come back. And you can maybe look at ways round the laws that way. In the evenings, I I didn't want to spend lots of money because I wasn't earning any money. Um, occasionally, as I said, went into the entertainment zones for a few beers, using the happy hours. I suppose a bit like a cheap Charlie. Wasn't interested in girls. But I spent a lot of time walking up and down the Sukhumvit Road, <laughs> like I was freelancing or something, but looking at all the people selling the products. A lot of it was counterfeit, but it gave me an idea of the popular products people, tourists were coming over and they were buying. It was the t-shirts. I love Thailand and the Thai silk, um, the wooden games and things from Chiang Mai, the little uh, puzzles and things, quite a few wooden products. But it gave me an idea of what people were buying when they were coming on holiday. And also prices. They were vastly... Um, inflated the prices so the Von Dutch jeans I bought if you were to buy them on Sukhumvit Road in the evening I paid 350 baht they were a thousand baht so these people here simple business they were buying at Pratanam in the morning selling at night making a nice profit again if you could dig down to where the Pratanam were buying from for say 150 200 baht you could make even more money and i started thinking about that more and more 
but the only way a lot of people won't tell you where they're buying from um, and you've got to start talking to people getting to know the locals before they'll open up so that, again that was in the back of my mind I had to make some friends and try and work out where they were buying them from it would save me a lot of legwork I used to go to uh, Pat Pong very famous for ping pong ball shows and late entertainment area but there was a market still to this day soy 2 or soy 4 Pat Pong and it runs right down the middle of the entertainment zone now that night market six in the evening it opens goes on till maybe 11 12 at night that one market always seemed to have the latest products the latest trend so for watches it had the latest model the clothes it had the latest brands it was sunglasses oh and there's another video for you but all the latest stuff was always in Pat Pong market and the prices in Pat Pong market were even higher than Sukhumvit Road the street sellers so those Von Dutch jeans in Pat Pong market would have been 1500 baht and I soon started seeing the pattern of how these street vendors were making their money and there was organized things going on behind the scenes you know someone maybe had 10 stalls and they had people working for them and they were buying in bulk and they'd have people all over on the street selling huge business huge money it soon became very apparent especially with the watches very tight-knit community the watch sellers were they were if they had counterfeit watches occasionally you'd see raids by the police so they clamp down and they take all the stuff off them so then the watches would suddenly disappear for a few weeks and they'd be back or they'd move where the store was that happened a lot it was annoying if you were buying off one person and then suddenly they got raided and they disappeared but by getting those business cards and contacts and phone numbers you could track them down again Pat Pong was a huge market, well it's not huge but quite a nice size market don't buy from there <laughs> not unless you're on your last evening and you've got no time left the prices are really inflated you're better off going to one of the specialist markets now I mentioned watches quite a few times I will come on to that as a separate video the watches Chinatown was around that area was where the watches were the cheapest clothes there were markets where they were buying I will in this series try and point you to where I eventually found was the the starting point where the bulk products were coming in and you could purchase at a lower price but the word bulk you had to buy quantity to get the prices down so this went against me sometimes because I didn't want a hundred items or a thousand items even though I could see it there at the lower price I couldn't get it because I just didn't have the quantity but I will in this series watches definitely do uh, a big thing on watches car accessories there was a huge marketplace for car accessories electrical goods from China torches anything electrical kettles there was an area for that clothes as I say Pratnam but there was other areas for clothes to get it cheaper every product you can ever think of is available in Bangkok at a much reduced price than you would pay in your own country unless you're living in a certain part of China of course and I'll try and go through with this series the, the different markets some prices and how I find, found them plus I've also dating the wife getting married etc that's going to come in the series later on as well so let's go on to computers today right now in 2017 there are in Bangkok some very very large shopping centers my favorite 
possibly the biggest, is Mole Bacon, MBK. Quite famous. Huge air condition shopping centre, not far from Siam Square. Really, it's the hub, the centre of Bangkok. Some six floors, I believe, covering thousands of square metres. On the bottom, it's all restaurants and zones where they'll bring cars in for showing and promotions. Now, each level has different products, and I always remember level five. I'm probably going to get it wrong now, but I'm pretty sure it was level five. Was telephones, a whole floor with little six-foot cubicles, so someone would have a a counter displaying phones, a seat, and the sides. So it literally was two meter and they would be paying for that two meter section to sell their wares. There were thousands of these little stalls on that one floor. Then you'd find a floor selling cameras and there was just thousands. It's a fascinating shopping mall, MBK. I love it, it's my favorite by far. You can sell to you bits and pieces second hand into there, you can buy second hand in there and you. But phones, it was the go to place for me if I wanted to sell a mobile phone. Again, we'll probably do a video on phones. But it was my go to place to sell phones and buy phones. There was a watch, a floor with just pretty much a half a floor with watches it was dotted all over the place. There were proper jewellers in the MBK. There's proper gold shops where you can buy and sell gold. Um, clothes, thousands of stores selling clothes, but again, higher price than Prattenham. In the MBK is a big car park at the back as well on several floors. So it's easy to get to. Aircon, food there. I spent probably if I condensed it, maybe 10 days, all day and all evening in MBK, going around all the stalls over my period. Absolutely thousands of stalls. Then across the road was Siam Square, more at market shopping centres, all the designer shops, cinema, bowling, restaurants, everything. Inside there even, there was a certain couple of floors at the back all mobile phones, all clothes, all the same stuff. And every big shopping centre had this, where they have a food section. Probably a food mall for the employees. And you could go in, tuck somewhere where you could get cheap Thai food. But the restaurants, around the centre of Bangkok, there are thousands of restaurants everywhere. All the shopping centres. But then there was um, it used to be called the World Trade Center. Then there was a fire, I think it was Sitan, it might be called now. I'll have to dig it up. But that was over near where I was living. Um, and there was a big sea shopping center opposite. So again, two big malls near where I was. All the same, designer shops, restaurants, all the same sort of stuff. Just with those four or five big malls, I could go and study products, prices, I could eat cheap, get to know people, get to meet people. It was wonderful living in the centre of Bangkok. All that on my door. Um, and I hadn't even, that first month living, I hadn't scratched the surface. Coming up again, we'll cover uh, other markets. There's a huge market out of town that a lot of foreigners would go on buses and coaches and would be bussed up there. Um, prices higher. But that market, and I've forgotten the name of it. Oh my God, the biggest market in Bangkok. I'll get it on the next video. You could buy animals up there, dogs, cats, oh, everything. Huge market. Up near Mo Chit. Um, I've forgotten the name of it. I couldn't get over, I was overwhelmed, and I love markets, I was overwhelmed by how many markets there were, how many square miles Bangkok covered. I was in my elements, I was absolutely loving living there. It was just the heat was just too much, it really was. But I soon learned to get around and 
which hours to avoid. My condo was fabulous for the money. And Somchai, the guy that was the manager of the couple of floors where I was staying, I had my laptop um, and I was doing lots of work on there, watching eBay and prices of products, comparing it to Thailand, the plan moving forward. It was a bit of a small screen. Chatted to Somchai, he had a spare computer screen. He lent me with a cable. Love the guy, what a lovely guy. And he upgraded my internet in my room and paid an extra 100 baht, I think a month, to the fastest internet I could get. Made a difference, really good. And my swimming pool, I found out it was 20 baht a time to go down there for the towel, but it was free to go in for me. I'd got the right condo. <laughs> so that was great. And there was a bit of a gym there as well. Perfect position to be. And the Judas Tower, to my knowledge, is still there today. In today's prices, you're probably going to get $400 a month, American dollars a month, for that condo. Still cheap. Stay there for a couple of months, very cheap. Anyway, these videos are flying by. So much information. I could end up doing 40 or 50 videos for this series, but as I, you know, I'm coming down on YouTube on the videos I'm producing and doing other stuff as I've already mentioned. So these I'm just going to keep drip feeding up and hopefully uh, you'll enjoy them. I'm sure you'll soon tell me <coughs> if you're not down below. I'll see you on the next video. Bye for now.